I bought this uh, Contour Design Shuttle Express um, to replace the old one on my Tormach, and I thought I'd take the old one on my Tormach and modify it. But <clears throat> after I got to thinking about it, I thought, well, um, this is about 60 bucks. Um, I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to modify the new one. Uh, to be a little more usable at the machine. So we're taking it apart here, as you can see. Um, I'm not in, in real intuitive of how to get things apart, but I took my other one apart because I did not like the step adjustment button ended up being under my palm, and, what, and I would accidentally change my step rate and I change it from a thousandths to a tenth of an inch and the next time I reached up and spun the wheel bang I'd, I'd break off a hymert. Um, so the first thing I did is I took mine apart and experimented and I found out that uh, it's just that bottom screw opposite the uh, USB cord that holds it all together and it just kind of pops apart so that's what I'm doing here is taking this thing <clears throat> all apart and uh, seeing where I can cut it, uh, hopefully I can reduce its size somewhat and repackage it and uh, make it into something that uh, I can get over too closer to the machine when I'm when I'm working with it. So, I mean, you know, it's got an optical encoder, and then I assume sort of some sort of a uh, pot that uh, you know the the, uh, the big knob kind of has a variable rate left and right and then of course your center knob is is off of an encoder and uh, you know I can I can see where I can kind of cut it um, without too much trouble and I'm gonna have to cut off the uh, USB cord and redo all those wires and it's so it, it's not for the faint of heart you're gonna do some soldering to you know traces that are probably eight thousandths of an inch wide and then you got the potential of screwing up and you got a, you got something that could make your machine take off and do you harm so don't you know this is uh, show and tell if you're brave enough to to cut up a sixty dollar unit and see what happens you can follow on through if not why go watch something else on youtube um, <clears throat> I see the, you know, it, uh, it, it, as I say, it comes apart fairly easily. You take uh, three or four screws out, it comes apart, and then you can pop the USB connector off. The USB cable is, is glued pretty tight to that back plastic, so if you take that off, you got to kind of really go at it slow with a pen knife so you don't tear the wiring up, But because uh, they glued it down pretty good. I don't know if they use CA or what, but it's, uh, it's bonded to that back plate pretty good, so... Anyway, um, you know, it's a simple, simple circuit. I mean, it's got, uh, you know, you got a, I think there's a crystal on the board, and uh, you got your five switches. Uh, the four, first four switches come in on the left there, and uh, then the fifth switch runs off to the right underneath the USB connector there. And uh, so those are the five lines that go to the unit, and they basically uh, pull that processor to ground, and that tells it, uh, what what axes you're in, or if you want to change the step. So um, that's uh, pretty straightforward. So anyway, uh, we're going to give it a shot. All right, well, I printed a case for it, and uh, I'm ready to go here. As you can see, I whacked off that part of it with the, uh, with the bandsaw, just cutting up this far and then flexing it to break off those two little tabs. Um, I noticed that on uh, the switches that they have here, they have little protection diodes, so I moved those over to the little board I made. A little board, I just made it with the iron-on resist etched it and I had some switches so I didn't have to take these off and I soldered it all up that all works the board's been all been tested out I moved the um, USB um, connector over to here and just hot glued it in place and after I had it all debugged everything was good no shards or anything and 
you got to be real careful with that but uh, check your wiring and then after I got done I hot glued the wires here this if you're gonna get in trouble where I soldered on the board that's where you're gonna get in trouble so anyway got that all checked out worked good last long time okay now what we got to do is uh, uh, I put in some three millimeter standoffs that I use uh, that I'm gonna hold the, the, the lid on and uh, we got to get those to the right height the center the center ones just have to be flush with this okay these three and that's important because you don't want this board here if it's not sitting flush and this goes down on there to rub and you'll turn it and it'll stick there so that's something you got to be extremely careful with when you put this thing together it's kind of might be a marginal project at the best anyway but something to do um, and also um, this here you got to make sure that it doesn't you know rub when you put all this back together and, and um, it, it should be able to do that anyway um, I'm gonna go in there with a pair of dikes and cut off these uh, and this these this as I mentioned is flushed with the top of the um, encoder and this this rear one has to be flush with this the top of this ridge the top of this ridge is this base this level here okay so anyway we're going to do that and then we'll try to put it together see if i can go find a pair of sharp enough side cutters to whack those off and see if i'm good enough at doing it I don't know. Maybe maybe this will work. Maybe it won't. I got extras, so... Uh-oh. Gosh, that's unusual. Can't open my mouth wide enough. Oh. Well. Let's see if this pair is any different. Oh. Let's see here. Yeah. Oh. Huh. That's interesting. Why one's bigger than the other. Well, that went reasonably well. That went reasonably well. Okay. Now, whether or not I can get a screw to start down on there, there won't be a lot of threads left. I'm aware of that. But it should be should be enough to, uh, you know, get her down in there. Let me do the rear one so we can push the lid down on there and see if it fits. Okay. Okay, let's see what happens. There we go. Okay, now this will sit down on cheer. Well, it looks good. That's about right. Put those in, put that one in, and that one in. And we're in business. And we have to, of course, our buttons, we're going to have to put our little button pieces in there and, you know, Assemble it so that the button, button, button. Okay. And um, then we'll put that on there. Oh, look good. And that on here. Okay. And we're in business. Okay. Now I did try to make another. This is really Mickey Mouse, this thing. I hate this. Okay. Um, but. Just gonna have to live with it. I made another one and um, fitted it down on there, uh, but it, it, all of the strength will be in the in the, one of the layers right there. So if I try, I made this thicker and higher so that I could put a knob on it, but it's it wouldn't work. I mean, I might try it, but what's gonna happen is it's gonna break off right there, guaranteed. And I'm sure that's part of the why they limited this design like this to just have the little you know touchy finger thing. Uh, it's simply because there just isn't enough strength in the in the uh, in the way it's done to uh, uh, you know to have have a knob a knob up there. And that's just that's just the way it is. You know I can I'll have to live with that. But uh, I might try it anyway. I, I printed one of these. Uh, I'll probably put it in the files. Uh, I had a hard time getting the print just right to go on there. What I finally ended up doing is I, I took a, took a, I heated this up, with a with a, with my hot with a hot air, 
and got it so it's kind of fl flexible and I went and shoved it down on there and it fits perfect now. But, but as I say, all of the flex will be in that and you can't have this come down and rub on this because if you did then you'd be turning that or this would stick. So anyway, that's the gist of all that. Okay, and um, only other thing, I think there's a spacer. I think you need a, a spacer up here that I got. I think it's like five millimeter spacer and then that'll all, all go together. Okay, well I'll go finish it up. You know, you got the wiring to, to put in here and loop around. I, I, the only thing I failed at was a strain relief. I should have something back here. I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live with it for a while. I, you know, um, it's not used that often. I can, it, it probably lasts me enough years with it stuck in here like that. You know, I put a knot, for, you know, to keep it from pulling out. I hope the electrons don't get confused which way to go, but, or get dizzy. But anyway, okay, here we go. Well, I got it. Um, I got it all together, and it and it went together great. Um, the um, these little standoffs that I use are okay. Um, there's not a lot of thread that mates. Um, where the where the base of this went down, I took a little CA and super glue and and put it around the base to keep it from turning. So when I take these screws back out, and if I pop this, you'll see the other three. Um, to keep them from turn, out, turning out when I take these other screws out. A um, little CA will keep them from rotating. Um, but it all, it all closed up pretty good, you know, for a 3D print. And um, a couple things to watch is the buttons. Make sure the buttons literally float in that hole. You don't want them to, you don't want them to stick at all. So you might have to take a pen knife and touch them up a little bit or whatever. Anyway, the buttons are good. I um, One thing I hate about the, the the original Shuttle Express was the step button was right over here. When I rested my hand on it, once in a while I'd hit the step and, didn't, and wouldn't know it because you don't know it. There's no indicator here. It's up on your screen. So then I'd get in here and go, you know, wooba, you know, and spin it. And instead of going a thousandths at a time or a tenth of a thousand, man, I'm going to a tenth of an inch and bang. There goes my Heimer tip. So um, I had two Heimer tips because of the stupid step switch. Then I took, that's when I first took my pen and the other, the, the Shuttle Express apart and cut the trace to that button over here. If I need to, sh if I need to change, I'll go to the, I'll go back to the screen. Here I left it, but I put a little guard so that you got to get in there with your fingertip to, to change the, uh, the step dimensions, you know. And while I was out there, I got to looking at this, and I thought, you know, plastic it wouldn't it wouldn't work to make one of these, but aluminum would work fine. So I sat on the lathe and and turned this out and put a little post on it, and and uh, I'll show you some video here in a bit, and and it works really good. Uh, that's a seven millimeter hole. It's probably a little bit lesser. Maybe it's a seven, and this this piece here is is because of its injection mold. It's got a, a maybe a one degree taper on it or something. But it's a little flipsy flopsy, um, but it's just friction fit, and and it works fine. I'm not decided what I'm going to do with that yet. I've got some low temp plastic. I could put a little in there and mush it in there and make it fit. But anyway, there's some downsides to this. Over this, um, this is is safer in that it's flush um, and you're not going to bump it and you're not going to put any torque on that uh, sensor so eh, I don't know um, this works better this is safer if you had this on here and you, you had it you set you set a zero and then you got it really good and then you as you walk over to set it back down you you, you just moved yourself you know, a few thousand, so that wouldn't be good. So I think some care, some thought has to be in whether or not it's worth having this like this, you know, um, whatever, something to think about. But uh, anyway, it works good. Um, I'm, I'm well pleased with it. It fits good in the hand. I can use it left or right-handed and, and uh, ding, ding, and ding, ding. It it's, it's works good. So 
Anyway, hope that uh, maybe somebody's out there brave enough to take a $60 unit and cut it up with a bandsaw. And if you do, good luck and, and uh, uh, hope you enjoy it. Thanks.